last night I couldn't sleep. Lay awake for hours, wrestling with the problems that face us today and all our tomorrows. And in the early hours of the morning, as the dawn rose above Westminster, I reached a decision. And the decision I made was to ban the motor car. No more noise, no more pollution, no more traffic wardens, no more waste of resources or finances. Stop him, someone! For God's sake, stop him! The swish of the bicycle tire and the distant sound of the toot toot tooting of the steam driven public transport. <laughs> It's going to take more than some green faggot to stop me. Look, I've got a full tank in this baby. It goes over 140. And I've never gone that fast before. But this time, this time, I'm going to give it some welly. Is anybody with me? Yeah. Right! <laughs> That bad. Well, does, does Magnus know? Well, in that case, wait for the meeting on Tuesday. Hmm. No, that's, that's a very good deal, believe me, Mike. Yeah. Look, I, I've got to go. My car's just crashed. I don't know, some kind of motorway parlor. All right, I'll call you on Monday. Have a good weekend. Bye. father decided he could afford a holiday um, but it was not to be because the day before his holiday began 
Bernard Foster broke his leg. And um, it was at St Mark's Hospital in Swindon um, that Bernard met a certain Nurse Watkins, who was, in fact, to turn out to be the future Mrs Foster. Um, I'm sure many of you gathered here on this happy day will recall those heady days at 17 Hendon Drive, Bernard and Carol's first home. But it wasn't all roses for the newlyweds, uh, because just as suddenly as it had begun, the fitted kitchen boom was over. So, uh, then in 1964, Bernard and Carol sold number 17 Hendon Drive and moved into the carpet business. What a mistake that was to be. <clears throat> then things improved for the Fosters, for there was to be a new addition to the family. And so it was that on August the 20th, 1966, Geoffrey Stephen Foster was born at the Stoke Newington General Hospital at 10 minutes past four. I, I first met Geoffrey at uh, St Albans Secondary Modern School and um, although not the greatest scholar in the world, Geoffrey was always pretty good at sports, especially behind the bike shed. I think that's enough of me. Um, I think it's time we, uh, we charged our glasses and uh, drank a toast to, to Geoffrey and Angela. To the happy couple. Thank you. My daughter is the most precious thing in the world to me. And when she came to me and begged me to let her marry that, because I love her, I agreed. Worst mistake of my life. But I tell you now that if that piece of scum doesn't stop drooling over my daughter this minute. I'll kill him. Jeffrey is the best catch in the county. And the only reason he got trapped into this marriage is because your daughter led him on and then wouldn't give him one unless he promised to marry her. Anyway, she's his now and he can do what he likes with her. Seems like a, a good opportunity to um, read out some of the telegrams. Uh... Which side are you on? The right or the green? I just came in to find a toilet. Third of the Bring us back to beer, would you? Look, 
I'm incredibly sorry about this. I completely forgot to thank the bridesmaids. Hi, I'm Angela's brother. It's a great day for it, isn't it? They said it was going to rain, but it's hardly a cloud in the sky. Daddy, where have you been? I overslept. Have they started yet? Yes. Uh, make sure everyone gets a sausage, won't you? Would you do something for me? We're in a bit of a fix. You see, our photographer has run off. Did you get in the car? Did he? Well, the thing is, he's left all his stuff here. But we've got no one to take the photographs, and I don't wonder. I went over with the camera. No. Well, look, I'll, um, I'll even pay you an extra 25 pounds. Huh? No, see, no, no. No, no. Well, in that case... <gasps> now, I owe a lot of God. Which means I've got very strong hands. So, unless you want to be singing castrato for the rest of your life, I suggest you take your group in there and play the first tune now. <laughs>
Excuse me. I'm a doctor. Could you all please take one step back? going to be all right, Doctor? I don't know yet. Shall I get us some chocolate? I'll tell you when. Mademoiselle, voilà, les dogs et mortes. I think this whole wedding's been a shambles. I mean, half of our relatives have been killed, some of whom came a bloody long way. Jim and Vi came from Cornwall. Well, we had some very close relatives, and some of them were quite wealthy. What are we going to do? I mean, we understood that she was a strong and a healthy girl. And now here it is, about two hours into the marriage, and you're telling us she's unconscious? Well, she's never been ill before. Has she, Stephen? A1 fit. All her life. We even had her checked out before the wedding by a, a very good family doctor. Well, it's just not good enough. We entered this marriage in good faith, and we're not satisfied. And I'm giving you fair warning that my Jeffrey is seriously thinking of calling the old thing off. Angela's going to be all right. Just fainted, hasn't she? No, it's, it's more than that. No, no, look, 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 can't you at least tell us what it is? Do you speak Latin? No, no. Please trust me. I'm doing all I can. I think it, it would have been a great wedding, wouldn't it, if, if they hadn't started serving the drinks so early? Yes, Jeffrey. 
Yes, you're right. It's the caterer's fault. Did you mention anything? No. I've got the tickets and I've written the note. Did you put the hotel? What note? Well, I just said that we were very sorry, but that I had to leave him and the kids because we love each other. here when you arrive. Oh, what a Christmas this is going to be. Kids are so excited that you're staying with us. Oh, have we got some stories to tell you, Victor? Jack, tell him about you. No, no, leave it out. Tell him about you. Tell him. Come on, have a drink. Come on. Victor, there's something I want to show you. She means more to me than anything in the world. I'm dead with her.
so long. Bye bye.